in 1945, the Manhattan Project designed and constructed the world's first atomic bomb. In 1969, NASA and the Apollo missions delivered the first man on the moon. In 2021, the little-known N-Gage Society designed, constructed and delivered the Hunslet. Tonight, on the, this edition of The Investigators, we go behind the scenes of this elusive organisation and bring you all the secrets of this uh, amazing project. Craig Lennox, reporting for WOSAG News, Glasgow. Our intrepid team of researchers initially looked for leads within the notorious dim internet. This led us to the website of the N-Gage Society, or NGS, and we persuaded an insider to give us entry to the organisation with the help of a bribe of £16 per year and a one-off joining fee of £6. Once within the organisation, we were able to view some of their most top secret files. The whole raison d'etre of this organisation is the indoctrination of its members in the dastardly art of shrinking the world about 150 times smaller so they can take total control from their lofts and basements and sheds. In real life, the Hunslet Engine Company between 1964 and 1988 built many diesel hydraulic shunters. The DH drive was felt to be superior than direct drive because of a smoother build-up of power and good slow speed control. The National Coal Board were one of the main users and they ordered an initial 20, but there were many others including BP, British Steel, the Central Electricity Generating Board and ESO Petroleum. 23 at least remain in active industrial service today, mostly through local hire company RMS Locotech, and at least six are in preservation. Two principal variants were in production, a 311 horsepower weighing in at 55 tonne and a 388 horsepower at 45 tonnes. The low profile bonnets and the 360 degree view from the cab was very appreciated. Maximum working speed from the Rolls-Royce C6 SFL engine was 15 miles per hour and none were authorised for use for mainline operations. In 2016, Two of the NGS Inner Sanctum, Mike Hill, the then NGS Production Development Officer, and Ben Ando, discussed what they should do to produce for members to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Society. Until that point, the Society had produced many plastic kits of wagons and coaches, and some ready-to-run items, even stretching to the BR snowplough. They made the brave decision to go for a powered model that would appeal to as many members as possible, and after much debate they settled on aiming their shrinking rays at a small industrial shunter and settled on the Hunslet. Detailed research by team members included visiting the preserved local 6950 Louise at Elscar Heritage Society and a visit to Long Marston Rail Facility where several are preserved. Direct contact with the Hunslet company in Leeds was made and they were able to provide engineering drawings which were of great use. The research bundle was packaged up, sent to China, and CAD diagrams were produced. The Society decided on offering a remarkable 4,500 units in total, covering 15 different liveries and an undecorated example, which you can see here. The next area for development was the electronics, and from the outset the team were keen to push the boundaries of the tech to enhance the running of such a small local. Discussions included installing a rechargeable battery, a stay alive capacitor was a possibility, and there was demand for the flashing amber beacon where appropriate. It was essential that simple conversion to DCC was allowed, but acknowledging that many members still run in DC. 
due to lack of space, it was decided that the decoder would be factory fitted and CT Electronic of Austria had the best reputation for this. NGS members Nigel Cliff and Julian Thornhill were drafted in to assist. Julian is an electronic and space technology scientist and has vast experience developing electronic systems for deep space. It was felt then that he was the best candidate to provide tech for coping with the environmental extremes of our lofts, basements and sheds. Once satisfied with the extensive testing, including running the decoder at 29 volts successfully, pre-production models were shipped over from China and minor changes were made. There were many hold-ups on the way to the final versions, notwithstanding some shoddy parking on the canal and a certain virus. Production samples were displayed at shows, and the final products were shipped to the UK in November 2021 of an initial limited set of liveries. The rest of the liveries will be delivered to customers later in the year. The cost to members only is just £82. Okay, so this is the traditional unboxing section. Um, this is the packet that they arrive in with the Engage ID. Some advice on the back that it's not for kids. And if we just slide to open. It's safely packed in the usual acrylic box. We can just remove this outer layer carefully. And there we have the logo there. Number 403, British Steel. Very fine detail, so we need to be careful removing this. Just hold at the buffer edges, I think, and take it out and put that there. And then another cushioning plastic section, and it looks like some information. Yep, some instructions. Some information on the DCC functions. And some details on construction or deconstruction. And the 12 month warranty. Also in the box, in a small packet, we've got some detailed parts. I guess these will be for replacing the buffer beam if you wish to remove the coupler and some other wee detailed parts and hoses when you're doing that. Very nice. I'm going to briefly show you some tests done on my own bench both with DC and DCC power. Running under DC required quite a bit of thought. The controller only comes alive above 4.5 volts and then if it doesn't sense a DCC signal it will operate as DC. At that voltage it would just race away at a very unprototypical pace. I believe the solution was to use pulse wave modulation to bring that down to about 1 volt and at 12 volts it will run at an effective 3 volts, which is just about the scale speed of 15 miles an hour. Control under DC power is very good, and the beacon and directional lights work too. It's hard to distinguish on this recording, but under DCC the engine is noticeably quieter and the slow speed control is better. 
function keys can be used to switch on and dim the directional lights and also switch off the amber beacon. There is also an inertia setting which at top speed will take 10 inches for the local to stop. Using F2, the local will perform a decoupling shuffle. On the Society website, there is detailed documentation on DCC programming and disassembly instructions. I wanted to test the local going over points, and in this instance used Code 55 Electrofrog uh, small curvature points. At slow speeds, it performs really well over these tight points. You may, with the zoom transmission of this video, see shuddering, but believe me, it is as smooth as butter. For the next test, I swapped in one Code 80 9 inch radius plastic frog turnout for the ultimate test. It's worth noting that the decoder chip is available to be programmed within GMRI already. As a very crude test of the Stay Alive, I operated the local at full speed and lifted it directly off the tracks and repeatedly I was getting between one quarter turn and one half turn of the wheels unpowered. Sometimes for larger rakes of wagons you need a little help from a friend. And to finish, here is a sneaky peek of the model on the layout. Thank you for watching.